You think Jesus can do anything right here in Las Vegas, Sin City? I believe that what God is doing is he's creating an eternal testimony. And what we know is when we can come together under a spirit of unity, nothing will be impossible. Hello and welcome to another episode of Las Vegas United. I'm your host, Aaron Pino. Here at Las Vegas United, we are partnering with God, creating the eternal testimonies of his goodness, mercy, and power. We bring on uh, pastors, ministry leaders, uh, people in our city who are making a difference. And even sometimes we bring on people from around the world to come on here to talk about how God is using them to make a difference in their sphere of influence. And today we have a special guest, uh, a new friend of mine. Uh, Would you help me welcome our guest today, Javen? Welcome to the show, man. Thanks, Aaron. Oh, I'm glad to have you on today. I know we were talking here before. (laughs) Yeah. You've already begun dropping some nuggets on us in in the studio. I mean, uh, we're going to have a good time today. Absolutely. Thanks for being on the show today. I'm glad. Thank you for having me in a great set. And I love Vegas. So. Yeah. Always glad to be here. Well, Vegas loves you too, my Thank friend. You. Welcome, Thank welcome you. to be here. Before we get going into uh, what we really want to dive into, let our audience know a little bit more about yourself. I was born in the city of, uh, well, I was born in the city of Boynton Beach, which is just south of uh, Palm Beach. I grew up in Hollywood, Florida, uh, went to school uh, in a Christian college, Lee University, after mm-hmm. graduating high school in Florida. That was in Tennessee. From there, I worked as a uh, music pastor in Tampa for several years. And right. then from there, went out west, came to, <laughs> came to California. <laughs> Started a, um, a, a sprawling career in music that parlayed into acting and then TV, TV hosting, producing. Somewhere in between there, we started writing songs, uh, doing movies. And uh, then God called me back to my hometown, Hollywood, Florida. And about nine years ago, eight years ago, we launched uh, the Now Church and now pastoring and uh, still doing all that other stuff that I just talked about. So that's a short version. Yeah, right? hey, that, <laughs> that's the very condensed version of a long life. Yeah, I, I like it. We were talking earlier, and I'm like, man, I want to be like Jake when I grow up. <laughs> Church planner, author, yes. entrepreneur, yes. TV host, Absolutely. and a myriad of uh, of a bunch of different things. Yes. I think uh, I think what you're doing is incredible. Thank you. I'm glad you you've made a little pit stop here in our beautiful city of Las Vegas. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So th- thanks again for being here uh, already. You're an inspiration to me. So, Amen. so thanks. So we want to talk about, um, you've recently written a book called do it now. Mm-hmm. And I just want to talk about some of the ideas and the concepts you have yeah. in the book. Obviously you are a go getter. Yeah. You are a, a, a mogul in my opinion, and, and you have an enterprise, you know yeah. what I mean? And I uh, think our audience needs to be exposed to those things because yeah. I believe when you see more, you can be more. Like and so uh, talk to us a little bit about the book, Do It Now. Well, I'm excited about this book. You know, God had laid it on my heart for a while to put to pen to paper uh, the experience that I've had uh, through ministry, through career, just through success. And uh, one of those things I discovered was the opportunity to uh, take advantage of every now moment that God gave me. Mm-hmm. So when you said, uh, hey, tell us a little bit about yourself, and I'm able to go from back here and then bring it all the way up to here, there's a lot of different differentiations in there. There's a lot of um, multi- multiplication there. The reason why that is, is because if the opportunity presented itself, I did it now. I walked through that door. And then when the next opportunity presented itself, I did it now and I walked through that door. So I often tell people now means next. Mm. So however you determine your now or whatever you're doing now will determine what's going to happen for you next. And then that next is going to become what we call new. So the word now literally means new. It means next. Mm -hmm. So if you always operate in your now, you then begin to operate, in my opinion, in the purpose of God. So in the book, I talk about there's a chapter on living on purpose, not with purpose. You know, we always talk about living with purpose, which is great. 
great. But what have we taught people how to live on purpose, to purposely walk into your day with the intent to win, mm -hmm. to purposely walk into a household, even if it's just a family issue, that I know that there's some tension here, but I'm going to purpose, purposely not have an argument. I don't care what is said, how much more that would change that now experience. And so we just dove into the book and really kind of help people unfold the power of now. Wow. Let me just take a deep breath real quick, okay? <laughs> let, me, let, me just, uh, let me just take a deep breath already. Um, uh, outstanding, outstanding. Yeah. Um, so the power of now, I like how you said, now determines your next. Mm. So I want to talk about the next, but talk to us how people can steward their now. Mm. Because I've met a lot of people um, for different reasons, primarily, and you might speak into this, fear. Mm. They're afraid of, of stepping into the, to the next thing. And mm. so right now mm. they operate in fear or maybe insecurity or lack or whatever it is that keeps them back yeah. thinking that they have a limit on themselves. Yeah. And so that holds them back from really capitalizing on today. So talk to us about that. So there's a chapter in the book called Understanding Your Beginnings. So what you just described there is somebody that is in presently, physically in the now, but mentally in the past. Mm. So what happens is we are finding ourselves not living, but existing. So I really challenge the reader and uh, our, especially viewers and those that are watching today, that it's so important for you to understand whatever it is that you are afraid of, whatever it is that is lacking in your life, that is pulling you down. All of that is just in your mind. Mm -hmm. All of that does not exist. You cannot take your high school and touch it if you want to. You can't take college experience and grab it. Mm -hmm. You can't take your 15-year-old birthday party that you had that was so extraordinary and, and be able to go grab it and pull it off the shelf and say, hey, here's my 15-year-old. Right, right, That's right. over. All of what happened in your 15-year-old birthday party, high school, uh, bar mitzvahs, whatever you experience, all of that is right here, if you remember it. God gives us memory uh, for not for us to be afraid of our future. God gives us memory so that we can move forward in our current and uh, make wise decisions in our future, right? So what you have to do in that, uh, in, in your now is understand your past. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this for a second. Cause, um, and I said this one time and you know, y'all church people uh, got mad. <laughs> <laughs> they said, Paul said, forget the things which are behind and press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling. We all know that scripture, right? Uh, and I have a chapter in there going, understanding your past. Paul wasn't saying, forget your uh, past in the sense that you throw it out. That's impossible to forget because God gave us memory, right? Mm -hmm. What he's saying there is detach yourself from that experience mm -hmm. and press towards that new and fresh experience. But sometimes in order to detach yourself mm -hmm. from that experience is you need to understand what that experience was and how that affects you now so that you don't keep making the same mistakes, mm. snapping off at people, cussing folks out, Hello. breaking off good relationships, burning bridges and things like that because of something in your past. So we say, be brave enough to look at your past. Now, now you can't fix your past. You can't change your past. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is you can understand it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the reason why I do this. Oh, that's the reason why I feel this way. And the more and more you begin to do the work to pull those layers back, that's going to make a more healthier you in your now. That's going to make a more certified you in your now. If you're not careful, you can be a 30 something year old man and mm. have an 18 year old brain. You Ooh. could be a 40 something year old woman and still still be triggered like that 15 year old girl if you don't do the work and 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 holy ghost and all saved and all mm -hmm. speaking in tongues full of the holy yeah. spirit yeah. but you have that paul said let you have to have that transformation you know you have to have to have that renewal of that mind meaning that mind has to be made new on a regular basis in order for you to have that sanctified experience so god saves us but our sanctification our sanctification and our process of becoming a better person is all up to us in our choices. And part of that choice is to make a decision that I no longer live in my past and I have to stop that. 
I no longer am a part of that system, and that's okay. It's okay to love people from a distance. It's okay wow. to just like somebody, you know, and move on with your life. Come on. And that's what now is all about, and mm. that's what I encourage the reader to do as they're reading. Wow, wow, wow. You, you are pastoring my soul right now. <laughs> I mean, my goodness. This is uh, out, outstanding. You're, you're right. Like, we can't control what has happened to us. No. But we can control what is happening in us. Yeah. And I love, you have to, you're talking about addressing those things in the past. That way you can live in the now. Yeah. That way you can eventually get to the next. Yeah. I think that's that's so critical for believers because, like you said, it. I've, I've met that 30-year-old man who's still 18. I've met that 35-year-old woman who's still 16. You know what I mean? And sometimes you just want to say, like, like, come on, let, yeah, let, let let's go. go. Yeah. Let let it go. Let's move on. And you know what, Aaron? You could be, you know, you could be uh, healthy until you come across, or you could think you're healthy mm -hmm. mentally, until you come across a situation. And that situation, and I know somebody can identify with what I'm talking about. Somebody can make you feel like that 15 year old mm -hmm. because of the way it, it could trigger something because of the way they treat you because of the, the scenario. Some scenarios we walk in, they are intimidating. So we, we go, you know, so we start dialing it back. Right. We started dumbing ourselves down and all that kind of stuff. And, and I talk about this in the book. Sometimes you have to remind yourself of your age so you can know how to posture yourself in that conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, it is important to do that because life will lie at you all the time. Mm. Life will tell you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> your life is terrible yeah, oh, and yeah. your life is quite blessed. Your life will, your life will tell you your life is, it, it's, a, it's a mess and your life is actually well put together. Mm -hmm. And I talk about how that, you know, the whole now experience is about divvying up the challenges in your life and dealing with one challenge at a time and not letting one challenge become your whole life. Mm. And I break it down in the sense of when I used to watch, I'm 12 out of 13 children, Whoa. Both, both from our mother and father uh, from the islands of the Bahamas. And all we right. all grew up in the same household and very loving, very close family to this day. My dad has since gone on to be with the Lord. He was a pastor in the Church of God for many years. Bishop, my mom was a woman of God and still is and just a prayer warrior, you're going to go to her and pray before you go into the hospital. You know what I mean? She's one of them type of mothers. Yeah. And I would watch my, watch my mother wash clothes for the entire family. She'd go to the laundromat, and uh, we'd have to help her separate those clothes uh, before she would put them in the wash. And, you, and I learned, I don't wash clothes, but I learned you take the whites, you take the <laughs> darks, and then you take the, the whatever, the lighter colors, and you keep them all separate and you wash them one at a time. But what you don't do is you don't take all the clothes and just throw them all in one wash. Because if you do that, the, it starts bleeding over and it starts ruining all the clothes. Church, I think sometimes what we do is we take our prop, we take a financial problem and we throw it in there with our marital issues. And we throw that in there with our spiritual walk with the Lord. Now wow. God is responsible for the fact that you didn't save wow. money and you spent all your money during the holidays because you got hyped up. <laughs> wow. Go ahead. Break it down. Break it down. Come on, Pastor. And the whole thing becomes a mess. And the reality is your whole life is not a mess. You just had a money problem. Mm -hmm. And money problems can be solved, you know, mm -hmm. if you just do the, do the work economically. Mm -hmm. Relationship problems can be solved if you just do the work relational. And you can go on down. Spiritual problems can be solved if you do the work spiritual. But don't take everything constantly and bleed it all together so that now you are walking around not knowing how in the world you created such a chaos of a life simply because you just didn't take the time out to divide the issues up and focus on one thing at a time and keep the main thing the main thing. That's what happens when you live in your now. I have to, I, I can't be worried about now church sitting here talking to you. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense. You understand? Mm -hmm. I can't sit here and worry about, I, I'm, you know, I'm <clears throat> singing this weekend. I can't be worried about that performance right now. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's about me talking to you on Las Vegas United, enjoying my new friend, talking mm -hmm. about do it now. Yeah. My mind needs to be completely and utterly on this. Now, does that mean I still don't have to deal with the issues of now, church? Of course, I still got to deal with that. Mm -hmm. But do I need to deal with that right now? No, I will deal with that when it's time to deal with that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. And so we, we're missing golden opportunities with great people because we are not living in our now. Man, 
I just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This, but this is it happens, but it a is a lot. Like, there's, I mean, I used to do it. Oh, trust yeah. me, that's why. Oh, I, so, that's why I write about it. Right. I mean, like, I, I've I've been there before. You know what I mean? Where I've literally, uh, I'll I'll tattle on myself a little bit. Okay. <laughs> like I was there just the other day. I'm dr- I'm on a date with my wife, mm-hmm. and she's telling me mm-hmm. about. This phenomenal French restaurant mm-hmm. that she's heard about that she wants to try. And I hear her talking. I'm, uh-huh. We're driving the car. I hear her talking. And I'm thinking about a new car that I want. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? And then I hear her finish the story. She goes, well, I could tell you didn't listen to that one. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And uh, I've done what you're talking yeah. about. You know what I mean? We where I've, where I've, I've, I haven't lived in the now. Yeah. And obviously, you know what I mean? Like... I have enough equity with my wife, you know what I mean, right. to where I'm not, cost you too yeah, much. I'm not burning the bridge there, you know what <laughs> I mean? But I mean, how many times have people, believers, they've been so distracted with the cares of life, yeah. with uh, money problems, family problems, everything like that, they miss out on the now, yeah. and before they know it, their whole life is passing by. Well, I'll tell you something even more important, you cannot operate in faith if you don't live in your now. Oh my gosh. Well, come on. <laughs> All right. Now, now you're diving into it. Go ahead. The scripture says now faith is. Mm-hmm. You could just stop right there to say, what is faith? Faith is now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not, not seen. When you start operating in a now faith, you're mm-hmm. operating in what God is wanting. He said, behold, I do a new thing and you mm-hmm. not know it. Mm-hmm. It is important for you to understand that when you operate in real faith, it is about what God is wanting to do in your now season, which is a new season, which determines your next season. Mm-hmm. So if you are not operating in currently what's go- God doesn't operate. Faith can't be a jump off from your past. Mm-hmm. Faith can mm-hmm. only be a jump off from right now. Wow. You can't talk about what you're going to do because of what has been done. You can only talk about what you are. Now you can, you can reference what God has done and what he did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but that ain't going to do nothing for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Shadrach and all of them ain't going to do nothing for you. <laughs> you don't grab a hold of your now faith or faith in your now to operate in what God's going to do in your next. And that's not going to happen if you start tallying back mm. how this didn't work out in the past or, you know, what if this happens? or And that goes to, you know, people that are around you that when you say you're going to launch your business and they start saying, well, you know, your uncle, you know, launched that same business and it didn't do well. Or like all these people walking around telling you not to buy. Now's not the time to buy. Now's not the time. It may not be the time for you, but if God told you to go get that house, you go get that house. Yeah. If God told you to launch that, well, you know, that business, you know, the you know, car business not doing well. That's not the thing to do right now. It may not be for you, but if God put it in your spirit to take that leap of faith, to walk in that now, that now season, you better do it because that will be a blessing for you. And you're going to miss that moment. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to be trying to, you know, circle back around to catch a moment that you miss because it's no longer in you now. Wow. So what would you say to somebody who, you know, cause I, I'm hearing this and honestly, whenever you're talking, I feel like, uh, like they're like, people just need to break through. You know yeah. what I mean? Like people just need to push through. People yeah. just need to, to go forward. Like how, Practically, and I don't want to. I don't want to steal all the principles from the book. You know what I mean? Because people need to go buy the book. Yes. But like, speak to the people who they need to just break free yeah. from that mindset. What yeah. What would you say to somebody? I think the first thing to do is do what you're doing now. Watch programs like this. Watch CTN. Watch good interviews and and let people speak faith cometh by hearing right Mm -hmm. so watch people that are speaking up i call it a speaking up have people in your life by the way that speak up and be able to identify uh, those people we talk about the community building in the book and how you have to build the right people around Mm -hmm. you you think about the the paralyzed man or the paralytic man that the four friends uh, take over to the house that they can't get in and then they lift this grown man up. Mm -hmm. Who's going to lift anybody up onto a roof, you know, that, you know, is not their 
blood child or something like that. This is a friend of theirs. Mm -hmm. And they make the effort to lift this man to, to the roof and not only lift him on the roof, but they go even further and begin to tear the roof off, mm -hmm. the Bible says, and let the man down to get his healing from Jesus. And if you look at the scripture, the Bible says Jesus doesn't look at the man and is impressed with the man because of his faith. The Jesus looks back up <laughs> the roof yeah. and he's impressed with their faith. And because of their faith, he heals this man. So so that speaks to your team and that speaks to the people you have that are speaking into your life. Are they speaking up? So that's the first thing. Get information that's speaking up into your life and then get revelation like books like Do It Now, The Word of God and other books that will help give you the information that you need. That begins to build your faith and it begins to change how you think. Most of what we are dealing with, listen to me carefully and if you don't hear nothing else, I tell you, most of what we're dealing with is a mind problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God is victorious. Jesus is, uh, has won the victory. The mm -hmm. devil is defeated. Mm -hmm. There is no need to continue to talk about him and to put him a part of your dialogue on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Who are you rebuking? You don't even know you exist because you're not even doing nothing to push back darkness anyway. So <laughs> don't even <laughs> you know. step on those toes, man. Go ahead. Step no, on I, those toes. No, I, mean, no, I, I know. I no, know. But, you know, we, 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 we carry on about people. We fight with people that are not fighting with us. Mm -hmm. we, we worry about folks that are not, you know, that, that we're concerned. They're talking about us and they're not even thinking about us. And we're bitter over folks folks that have moved on with their lives. You see, all of this stuff is right here in our minds. And so God is our savior, but we've not made him our Lord. When you make him your Lord, I'm about to walk <laughs> off this set right now. I'm about to walk off this set right now. <laughs> when, you, when you make God your Lord, you begin to understand how much of a winner you really are. And if you're not seeing manifestation of winning in your life, then that's not the life he gave you. That's the mind said you have about the life wow if i wasn't if i wasn't hosting the show <laughs> i'd be doing laps around this studio right now i'm telling you right now Amen. it's so true it yeah. is so true our yeah. our lack of victory in our lives is not because yeah. we serve a weak come on victim god come on it's because the way we are viewing him and viewing ourselves. he said it's finished right <laughs> He ain't gonna get back up on the cross and die again. He already died. He took the sting from and the victory from death, hell, and the grave. And he went back to sit at the right hand of the Father, making intercession. That's what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. That's not Javen's words, that's not Aaron's words, that's the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He went to the woman at the well and told her, Now the time has come and is now when the true worshipers will worship me both in spirit and in truth. He was saying, I'll give you water that you never thirst again. Basically, meaning if you will take this grace that I give to you, if you'll accept this message of salvation and this gospel, it'll change how you look at yourself. That's why he said that you're right. The, the, the husband you got at the, the board, the man over in your house, mm -hmm. that ain't your husband. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he changed the way she saw herself. Wow. He changed her mentality. And just in that, and here's the beauty of that. It didn't take four revivals, five conferences, <laughs> <laughs> one conversation. Wow. And it transforms how she looked at herself. She does what? She goes running back to her hometown and says, come see a man. Theologians say she becomes one of the biggest evangelists, reaching more souls than some of the 12 disciples. Why? Because she changed the way she saw herself. <clears throat> People need to get this book. They man. do. <laughs> People need to get this book. I'm telling you right now. Do it. Do it now. Yeah. Do it now. Tell us the, the subtitle of the book. Do it now. Why wait when your best is now? Why wait when your best is now? Time waits on no man. If nothing taught us that more COVID and all that stuff we experienced, it really was a wake, in, a wake up call for us to let us know whatever you're going to do, you better get going. You better study. If you're going to launch a church, you better launch it. Hello. If you're going to start a business, you better start it. If you're going to go on vacation, you better go on the vacation. You know, whatever it is that God has placed on your heart, your dreams, your desires. I believe that once God shows you something, that's another thing we talk about in the book that's very important, that once God shows it to you, that's your green light. You don't need a prophet to come spit on you and throw oil <laughs> on you and all that kind of stuff, man. God showed it to you. He's the one that showed you. The devil doesn't show you nothing good. Yeah. The enemy doesn't have the ability to show you life. He, it's not even in him to show you life because he is death destruction. So if God shows you oh something, my, my gosh. God, that's your green light. Go. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm saying though, like, 
here oh you're, you're saying things that are just for me yeah I'm not saying I'm in like a, a bad no, no, no. place or yeah. anything like that. You know what I mean? I know get rid of your past and yeah. live in here now. But man, yeah. the fact that you said if God shows it to you, that yeah. is your green That's light. That's your green light. Don't ask no questions. Do it Like now. how you said it. You don't need a four-week revival to, <laughs> to pray about it. But we do that in church culture, man. Yeah. You know, I... I, I, I work Can I give you one? I don't know much yeah, time go we ahead. got. We, got, we got like three minutes. Go ahead. All right. For all my Bible heads out there, I'll give you one more. Uh, 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 Nicodemus, not Nicodemus, um, uh, Zacchaeus. So, so Zacchaeus is the short guy. He's up in the tree. He watches Jesus preach. But when Jesus comes uh, uh, back, uh, uh, walking back out of that that area, he, uh, he Nicodemus, uh, I mean Zacchaeus, reaches out to him. He tells him, "Come down out of that tree." Hey, Zacchaeus, I'm gonna go hang out at your house. Now, why is this significant? Because any time an important person came to town, if you went to that person's house. What you were saying is that is that person is the most important person in that community, in that city. Wow. Now, why is that a problem? Because Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was Jewish and he was collecting taxes, working for the Romans. And he's still and not only is he taking the taxes for the Romans, but back in those days, they didn't get paid that much. So he'd add an extra tax on top of the tax. He's basically stealing from his own people. <laughs> I mean, this guy is hated. He's a sinner, yeah. sinner. These people can't stand this guy. And here Jesus is just got through preaching and them all embracing him as the rabbi that he is. And out of all the people he could choose to go eat with, he chooses to go eat with this top center in the community, the God that's stealing milk out of their baby's mouth, the God that's taking their mortgages, the God that's, you know, basically causing their whole family structure economically to go down. Why would Jesus go and sit with this guy? Jesus goes in and not only sits with him, he dines, he fellowships with him. And as he's fellowshipping with Jesus in that now moment, Nicodemus gets a revelation. He gets set free. He gets delivered. And just by being in the presence of Jesus, he says to Jesus, I'm going to give everybody back everything that I stole from them. I'm wow. not only going to give them back what I stole, but I'm going to give them double. I'm going to give them more than what I stole. Jesus. Now, mind you, the, they don't know this conversation took place in the house. They are out there talking about Jesus. How in the world, especially the religious, that he goes sit with sinners like that. Mm -hmm. Jesus. So there's a conversion that takes place in this, this house at this dinner. Jesus walks out on the porch and throws his hands up and says, this guy is now one of us. Wow. He is now a believer. People are looking like, how in the world is he? A, you just walked in the house with one of the, but they didn't know the conversation in the house. They didn't know the conversion that took place. They didn't know the business deal that just went down all by the grace of God. And what that tells you is sometimes people don't know that God has done a new work in your life. Sometimes Boy. people don't know that God has totally transformed you, that God has totally changed yes, you, yes, that you are yes, no longer yes. who you used to be. And while they're still sitting there talking about who you was, you are moving on to who you now are. And that's what living in the now is all about. Mm. It is not being concerned about who knows what about your past and your failures. It's about accepting the grace of God in your now season to be transformed, to walk in the grace of God that he's given you. Wow. Get the book, people. Get the book. Get the book. If people want to get a hold of the book, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, so the book is available on uh, Amazon. It's available at Barnes & Noble. Wherever books are sold, it's available on uh, digital uh, uh, platforms. So you can get an ebook and all that stuff uh, under Javen. Do it now while waiting. Your best is now. Um, and you can also go to our website, which is javenonline.com. lady said one time she couldn't find me and she was spelling my name with an I. Okay. So <laughs> it's J A V E N. All right. So javenonline.com, they can get it on our website. And of course our social platform, social media platform is the same thing at Javen online, you know, so any or, or, or any of those platforms, you can reach us and grab the book, but I totally Amazing. encourage you to grab. And the other thing I do want to say about this particular uh, version of the book is there's a study guide at the end of every chapter. Mm -hmm. So some of the uh, exercises I was talking about, you get a chance to do that and write down and answer those questions. So this has become a favorite among study groups. It's become a favorite among cell groups, life groups, okay, leadership groups. Yeah. So don't just grab one, grab a couple and uh, gift them out to your group and, uh, you know, tell them to pay you back, whatever <laughs> you yeah. got to do. It. But, but this will be a great uh, book for those of you that have book clubs and stuff like that. Awesome. Anytime you're in Vegas, 
I want you on the show. Thank you. You have the invitation. Thank you. And listen, I want to thank you for joining us uh, here at Las Vegas United. Let us know uh, where you're watching this from, maybe Keen 17, YouTube. Uh, maybe you listen to this on iTunes or Spotify, wherever you're getting this from, let us know, email us. We'll put the email link down below. Thank you so much for joining us on this week of Las Vegas United. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Our show is hosted by Pastor Aaron Pino of Overflow Church. To learn more about him and his ministry, please visit overflowchurch.co. The guest this week is Javen. For more information, go to javenonline.com. Las Vegas United is produced by CTN Vegas. For more information about CTN Vegas and our show, please visit ctnvegas.com.